tell you that God is about to do something great even though it is different and even though it seems a little difficult that's exactly where God loves to be he likes to be right in the middle of the crazy and the difficult can I get an amen 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 I'm thankful I'm thankful tonight the title of my sermon tonight is how hard are you willing to fight and that's my question for you tonight where'd Ariana go okay there she is I got some folks that are going to come help me out tonight. Brother Shane, big old, big old Shane is going to come help. And little old Ariana is going to come help. Yeah, that's fine. Show everybody what you got, Shane, first. Show everybody what you got first. Show everybody what you got. Right now. Okay. Cash money. <laughs> Cash money Shane's got, okay? And I don't know if you know this or not, but these little kids do anything for some money. They ain't got no business having no money, but let me tell you, they do anything for some, okay? So Ariana is probably dying to get that money right now. Are you dying to get that money? What would you, what would you spend that money on if you got it? Talkies, talkies. Okay, so she desperately wants this money. And so Ariana, I'm asking you, how hard are you willing to fight for that money? Let's see. <laughs> oh, some of us need to do that to the old devil right there. Just knock him on the head just like that. Okay. <laughs> That's how some of us look. Can you turn my monitors down a little bit? That's how some of us look. There's... <laughs> 
Did you see her at the beginning? She stood there and she looked back at me for a second like, are you joking? <laughs> I said, how hard are you willing to fight for this? And she turned back and she looked at me like, are you serious? Sometimes God's saying that exact thing. How hard are you willing to fight for what I have for you? How hard are you willing to fight for your plans and for your future and the calling that I have for you? And we turn and we look back at him like, are you serious? Because do you see what's standing in the way of me and everything that you possibly have for me? I'm saying, Ariana, hey, this is yours if you can get it. And she stopped and she said, that looks a little difficult. But if you look at her now, once she got past the fact of thinking, oh, that might be a little hard, it seems kind of impossible. And to be honest, it still looks kind of impossible because she's trying to do it all by herself. And she has this big old guy sitting on everything she could ever want. That's how we feel sometimes. And I feel like Resonate Church as a whole is right here. God has plans. He has dreams. He has everything waiting right here for us. And he has something in our way. But that's not for us to give up and throw in the towel and say, okay, then that must not be what you have for me. Tonight, he's asking, how hard are you willing to fight for those plans, for those dreams, for those promises that I have made to you? I'm saying, Ariana, you can have this money. This is a promise. I'm going to give you this money, but you have to get to it. But not a single time has she said, hey, can you help me? Because there's no way I can get through this by myself. Chris, <laughs> no, no. Hey. And that's it, kid, come on, because that's exactly how we are. I'm glad she did that. I didn't even tell her to do that. That's how some of us are. We have God, uh, not to compare me to God. But we have God standing right up here. All we have to do is say, God, can you? (laughs) Okay, let's put it on pause. Let's put it on pause because that's how we are sometimes. God's standing right here waiting on us to ask for help. And instead of looking back at me, who's right here by her side, here to help her, she calls one of her friends out from the audience and says, hey, Crystal, can you come help me? That's exactly what we do. We're trying to break through. We're trying to get everything God has for us. Instead of saying, God, can you please help me? Well, I think I need to call Sister Lily and see if maybe she can help me out a little bit. I think I probably need to call Sister Mary and talk about how everything's so bad how it doesn't look like I can get through it and then maybe she has some secret recipe she's a little bit stronger in her faith than I am but not because God didn't give us the same amount but because she knows how to use a little bit more of it than me I'm gonna call her so that maybe she can help me get what God has promised to me and if you notice Crystal was a big help they got a lot closer than just Ariana by herself But what good is that when I'm the one that promised it and I'm the one who has the power to say, hey, get up out of the way. Oh, he's holding it behind his back. And that's what I promised you. And here it is yours. But first, I wanted to see what would you do for it? Are you willing to fight for what I promise you? Or are you just going to stay like this a little bit longer and look and think, okay, I can't do that. I'm not going to survive that. Do you see how big he is? I mean, look at the size difference between the two. We could all look at her and say, there's no way she's getting that. I mean, I told Shane before that I said, oh, let her punch and kick you. And I was like, but don't let her have it. And I was like, wait, there's no way she can get it anyway. That's how we are. In our flesh, we look at these big old obstacles that are standing in front of us. And right behind or underneath, if you will, is everything that God has promised to us. And yet we look and we think there's just no way. I'm never going to get it. And I'm not even going to try. That's how we are a lot of the time. It looks too difficult, so I'm not even going to try. Where she did this for a second but then kept on pressing, a lot of us sit like this for about two or three years before we ever try to make a move. You guys can sit down now. We sit there for two or three months, and it turns into two or three years, and then it turns into two or three decades, and we're thinking, God, where is this that you have promised me? And he's saying, it's right here. 
There's just some stuff you got to go through first before you can get to it. And sometimes it might knock you down. Sometimes it might hurt a little bit. Sometimes you might get a little sore when you're going through it. But that's because, first of all, you're trying to do it all by yourself. And then when you finally realize you can't do it all on your own, you'd much rather call a sister or a brother saying, hey, or even Pastor Brian and say, hey, can you help get me out of this mess? Hey, can you please help me pray that God finally answers this prayer that I've been praying for four or five years? And God's standing back here right beside you like, hello, I'm here to help. I hold every key. Why don't you come ask the one that's right beside you who has all power? But first, I want to see how hard you're willing to fight. So that's what I'm asking you tonight, is Resonate Church, how hard are you willing to fight? How hard are you willing to press through what seems impossible, what seems um, um, just upsetting, what seems unusual? How hard are you willing to fight through that and get everything that God has promised? Because when God makes a promise, that's exactly what he intends to do. It's us that stand in the way. If you're thinking it's not here fast enough or you think it's never coming, it's you that's in the way. How hard are you willing to fight? Three times, I'm going to talk about two, that Paul talks with Timothy about fighting the good fight. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Witnesses, And then again in 2 Timothy verse four through four, chapter 4, verse 7, goodness gracious, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. So Paul is the one that's running here. He's been through some stuff, in other words. He's fought some fights. It's been a good fight. And he's ran his course. And that's what he's telling Timothy. Keep your faith up. Keep pushing and keep fighting. But today in our world, there's such a misconception um, that some people believe that there's just nothing on this earth that's worth fighting for. Just nothing. And a lot of times stuff on this earth isn't worth fighting for, but it's what's outside of this earth that is worth fighting for. We expect because we live in this world where everything is handed to us, and if it's not handed to us, then we must not need it, or, or we're not going to work hard at all for anything, that we expect God's plan and God's purpose for our lives, for our church, for our community, for whatever it is, to just fall all in our laps, and we expect it to get it all by ourselves and for it to be easy. But that's not the case. It takes a little bit of effort. It takes a little bit of fight that you have to pull out from deep inside of you and say, okay, I'm ready to go to work and I'm ready to get what God has for me. The book of Hebrews actually gives us um, some examples of fighting and suffering, okay? So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 through 38. And what shall I more say? For the time of fell me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of all the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed diligent in fight, turned into flight of the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life, and yet others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had a trial of cruel markings and scurrings, yea, moreover bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with sword, they wondered about it in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. And they wandered in the desert and in the mountains and in the day, dens and the caves of the earth. So these people went through some things. They had to fight 
some fights. And I don't know about you, but as I stood back and I read these verses, I'm like, wow, I'm glad that's not us. I'm glad we're not out here fighting with actual physical swords. I'm glad we're not having to be stoned to death. I'm glad nothing like that is happening because really our flesh in this day and age can't even handle uh, the little bit of what we get. Imagine what these people had to go through back in the day. And we can't handle somebody talking behind our backs about us standing up for Christ. These people fought fights that us today could never even imagine. They went through things that we could never um, fathom, if you will. But nothing's different for us. They struggled back then. There were problems back then. They had to go through things back then. We have to go through things now. And here's the lucky part for us. It's not nearly as bad as it was way back then. But those are examples that show us that we should not be content at where we are. You're either going to grow or you're going to decline. There's no way that you can just stay still where you're at. Okay? You're either growing or you're going backwards. It it's, uh, reminds me of that teeth commercial, if you're not whitening, you're yellowing. Those are your only two options. You're not staying kind of where you are. Your teeth are either getting wider or they're getting more yellow. You're either getting closer to God or you are getting farther away. If you think, oh, I'm perfectly fine where I am, you're drifting off. You should never be content was staying in those waters to just stay afloat, that's no good because those waves are just going to take you further and further out of shore. They continually had to fight to grow. They weren't just handed things. They had to go through some stuff. If you're in ministry, you um, can testify to this. You're going to have to go through some stuff in order to grow. The decline, though, feels a whole lot easier than the struggle it takes, the fight it takes to grow, to push through the worst moments of your life, to kick down the door and say, I'm going and I'm standing for Jesus no matter what. It's a whole lot easier to just stay where you are and slowly drift backwards, to put no effort in, to get comfortable than it is to ever put your foot forward and say, I'm fighting for my purpose. I'm fighting for my calling. I'm fighting for what God promised for me, but not just for me. I'm fighting for what God promised Resonate Church, because if he made a promise, he intends to deliver that promise. Everything God has for you is a continuous fight uphill. And Dr. John C. Maxwell said, everything worthwhile is uphill. Nothing good, nothing, nothing spectacular, nothing tremendous, nothing that's just going to blow your mind is at the bottom of a valley. There's good things there. You can find goodness in the valley. But everything that's worthwhile, all your dreams, all your prayers, all your promises, everything to get there is uphill. You have to fight for what you want. You have to fight for everything to get what you need. So before we can actually answer the question, are you willing to fight? How hard are you willing to fight for what God has for you? I want to take a deeper look at that word fight. So the Greek word that was used by Paul in those verses we read in Timothy is actually a A-G-O-N-I-D-Z-O, agondizo, okay? It means struggle. Struggle, great exertion, or effort. And that's also, if you study it out, it's where we get the word agony. So how hard are you willing to fight? Are you willing to go through some struggle? Are you willing to put forth a great amount of effort but still be in a little bit of pain, still go through some agony. Is it worth it to you? Because to Ariana, that money was worth getting a little bit sore, getting a little bit tangled up down here. It was worth it to her. If it wasn't worth it at all, 
and it probably would have been easier because I'm not going to lie, it was only two bucks, not like it was a hundred bucks sitting under there. It probably would have just been a whole lot easier to say, okay, that's not worth it. Let's just go on and sit down. But that was worth it to her. And if something is worth it to you, you're going to put forth a little bit more effort. And by golly, she did. But if you told me there's two dollars under there, I'm saying I'm not getting in a wrestling match with him. I'm just going to go sit down. It's a perspective type of situation. If it's worth it to you, you're going to push forward and do everything that you can, even though it brings a little bit of pain, although it brings a little bit of suffering, although it makes you a little bit sore, you're going to fight through and you're going to get your two dollars. And here's the thing. If this fight went on for days, if this fight went on for weeks, if this fight went on for months, years, however long, the more she fought, the stronger she would be. Because the more you fight, the more you train, the more familiar you become, the more muscle you begin to grow, and the easier the fight gets. So sometimes we put in all the effort, just like Ariana did, and all by herself, her little tiny self, trying to fight that big old giant. But when we fight with our own strength, there's only going to be one of two results. We either don't fight at all because we allow fear to take over. Like we've already talked, we think, I can never do this. This is no good. Um, there's no sense in even trying. And that's how we are. If you're sitting here saying, oh, I would never do that, you're lying to yourself. Because we've all been right there where we're faced with a situation and we allow fear to take over. And maybe it's not forever that we allow fear to take over. Even if it's just for a moment like Ariana did when she turned back around. You're second guessing God and everything that he has for you instead of saying, okay, let's lace them up and let's go. We either don't fight at all or we do fight and we get tired. We get a little fatigued. We get a little sick. We get a little worn out because we're trying to do it on our own. And that's exactly how Ariana was to the point that she had to call on somebody else. Of course, it was the wrong somebody else because here I am up here trying to be God, not that I am. Uh, but instead of turning around asking me who's right here on the stage with her, she's got to call old Crystal back from way back there. She was tired. She was worn out. But she looked to the wrong person. How often is that also us? We're so tired and we just want anybody to help or tell us that we're doing right. I've been there. You just want a little bit of encouragement, just somebody to tell you, okay, you're doing great, honey. Okay, keep pushing because you're on the right track. Hey, you got it. Come on, keep your head up. This is just the beginning. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're awesome. But really all we need to do is say, God, I'm tired. God, I've tried. I've fought. And God, I'm just a little tired. Can you help me? Can you give me some strength at least in this time? If it's not your time yet, God, can you at least give me some joy, some strength to help me continue to fight the good fight? In both cases, where we don't fight at all or when we get fatigued because we're doing it on our own, in both of those cases, the enemy wins. But that's never God's intention. We never want that old devil to win, not a lick of nothing. The Apostle John tells us that the one in us is greater than the one who's in the world. And then Isaiah, he tells us where our strength comes from. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31. It says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths, even old tiny Ariana, shall faint and be weary, but the young, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. We know this verse. We've heard this a million times. You've grown up in church. You've had this planted in your head since you were, you know, out of the womb. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. They that wait on the Lord. 
They just say, hey, God, I'm tired. Can you please help? And he says, it's not my time yet. Just wait for a moment. He gives you strength to outlast and to endure the rest of that fight. He's never going to leave you hanging. He's never just going to say, oh, well, I'm busy with someone else right now. You just keep going, and then when I get the time, I'll come up here and I'll help you out a little bit. That's never my God. He's going to give you strength to endure what he's put you through. He's never going to put more on you than you can bear. He's never going to give you more than you can handle. But sometimes we do get tired. Sometimes we do get a little weak. Do I have anybody in the house who's just a little tired, just a little weak? Just me? Yeah, yeah. Just a little tired, just a little uh, confused, just a little, God, I don't think I can do this, but I, I know that you've called me to, so God, I just, I'm asking for some help, and God, if it's not your time yet, give me the strength while I wait to keep fighting this fight, to keep pressing on for you, no matter what, because God, it'd be a whole lot easier to turn back around, stay at the house, put the Bible on the shelf, delete the app from the phone, you know what I'm saying, and just do my own thing. It's always going to be easier to do that. But God, give me some strength to not ever want to. God, give me some strength to keep fighting when I don't feel like fighting anymore. That's who my God is. So now let's consider how God uses fighting. Because it's not that God necessarily wants the struggle. Sometimes the struggle comes from us ourselves. Sometimes it comes from our flesh trying to resist God's will. Anybody ever been right there where your flesh is begging, no, 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 no. <laughs> that can't be. God, I don't want to do that. That's the struggle we're putting on our, ourselves. There's nothing, no one else we can blame. There's no one else we can, uh, there's no, it's us. And I bet almost all of us have been right there where God presents something to us and he's calling us to do something and we say, that's just not what I had planned. That's just not what I want to do. And our flesh begins to take over. And not only now are we trying to fight this fight, but now we're having to fight, fight the fight against our flesh. Another way is our mind. I'm telling you, this mind will get you every single time. Our mind trying to understand what God has told us and what God has called us to do. If there's one thing I've learned in my walk with God, in my road of ministry, in whatever you want to call it, it's that God's plans don't make sense. God's logic does not line up. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. And the more you sit here trying to understand how it could possibly work, the more your mind starts running wild the more your flesh starts to take over those two things, run hand in hand, and the more you're just completely resisting it all together because logically it doesn't make sense to you. God's plan is never going to logically make sense. If it logically makes sense, it's probably not God. Let me just say that. God's plans always look impossible at first because God doesn't always call the equipped. God's not always going to call someone who was made exactly for that. He's going to call those who have no education background. He's going to call those that, that have speech impediments. He's going to call those um, that have no business in the eyes of the world being in their position. That's who he's going to call. And logically, it doesn't make sense. Because why would God choose me? When he could have chose somebody that has a degree in all this background who has studied for years and years and years about the Bible and has a degree in theology and, and in philosophy and all this stuff, God, why would you choose me? Because logically it doesn't add up. You have all these other options. It can't be me. It can't be me that you've chose to be the praise and worship leader when I can't read a lick of music, don't know what key we're in, don't know anything about it, but yet somehow he's called me. When you have people like cornbread all on, you know, scattered all around the earth, not like cornbread, but have the talents of cornbread, who can just pick out what key we're in, who can just throw stuff out there, who can just, you know what I'm saying? And, and logically it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for me to be where I am. 
But it doesn't matter what logically makes sense because God says to him it makes every bit of sense. Because he's called me to do it, I'm going to push through the fight, and, and I'm going to do it. Even when it's not comfortable, I'll tell you right now, me behind this piano, not comfortable. I love to play the piano. I love to sing, not at the same time. So, of course, that's exactly what God in this season has called me to do. He says, so you were getting too comfortable just standing up here doing your own thing. I got you where I wanted you. Now I need to take you somewhere else that's not comfortable at all. And let me tell you, you guys can probably tell, bear with me, it's not comfortable. It's different. And logically, it doesn't make sense to me. But God said, that's the plan, that's the purpose, that's what I've created you to do. So you're going to have to fight through it, even when it's difficult and even when it's hard and even when it's easier to just throw in the towel and say, okay, we're done. We have to fight through and do it anyway. And then the last thing that our struggle can come from is the fact that, you know, the devil is against every single step of faith that we take. He's going to be right there behind you, waiting on you to slip up, waiting on him, just waiting to creep in and seeing what he can destroy, what he can um, take away, what he can do. And if we're not careful, once again, our mind gets out of control, our flesh starts to take over, we do trip, we do fall, and then we allow him to take foothold inside of our door and he can weasel his way in. We have to be careful what we do. We have to put on the whole armor of God withstand. When he comes against us, we have to know better. And then lastly, what does God instruct us to fight for? And I think that that really just boils down as to where our faith lies. Okay? Neil Anderson said, the truth is, listen here, everyone lives by faith. The only difference between Christian faith and non-Christian faith is the object of our faith. Everyone lives by it. The only difference is, what is your faith in? The critical issue is what you believe or who you believe in. That's what he said. And I think that sums it up perfectly. We all have faith, but who are we putting it in? Are we putting it in man? Are we putting it in a leader? Or are we putting it all on God? My faith, my hope, my trust, my everything is in Jesus. Or is your faith, your hope, your trust, your everything in Pastor Brian? That's no good. We need to have faith in Jesus. What the enemy means for destruction, I'm telling you, I, I can testify this, what the enemy means to tear you down, to ruin your life, to drag you inch to inch, you just feel like you can't go on anymore, may be our God-given opportunities, and how we react to those is going to determine our plans that he has for us. When we don't have the faith, when we don't have the guts to step out in faith, then God gets robbed of that glory that is rightfully his. When we're too scared to take the next step and we don't feel like we can, we're robbing God of his glory. We're taking something away from him because we're too scared. We have two choices. We can cower down in fear. We can run away from our greatest challenges or we can chase that God-ordained destiny by going out and fighting for that opportunity. Even when it's hard, even when it doesn't make sense, we fight through it anyway. We were each created by God with a unique purpose, but it's going to take faith, and it's going to take a little bit of fight to accomplish that purpose, because anything done by faith is going to require a fight of some sort, anything, everything. If you really want to win, you're going to have to put forth some kind of fight. But God is calling us to stand up and fight with everything that we are and stand firm for what he has promised us. So in order to truly live, are you willing to fight 
for what God has for you? And that's the question I'm here asking you tonight. Are you willing to fight for your calling? Are you willing to fight for those promises that he has made to you? Are you willing to fight for your relationships, for your family, for, for, for your mind, for your decisions, for everything? Are you willing to fight to be in the will of God? And I just, I just feel like the biggest one is, are you willing to fight for those promises? So many of us in here, God has made you a promise. I know for certain God has made me a promise in areas of my life that I'm not ready to disclose yet. And it's easy to get down and out and think it's just never going to happen. Things go the opposite way and you think, okay, this, this, I, I completely made this up myself. God didn't promise it. I promised myself this and I got my hopes up, and it was just nothing. It, he never promised it, it wasn't from him. But that's not true. That's not true. He made you a promise. He said it right down, right there. And then he put something on top of it to see how hard you're willing to fight for it. To see if you are just going to throw in the towel and be done. Resonate, church. He's ready to see how hard you're willing to work, how hard you're willing to fight to push through whatever this mess is. How hard are you willing to fight for our church, for our community, for these people who are watching online right now? How hard are you willing to fight? Or is it easier just to throw in the towel and say, okay, I'm done because things aren't looking the way, God, that they should be looking right now? We've been here almost three years. Things don't really look that great. Things don't really look that good. I don't understand what's going on. So it's a lot easier just to cower down and just to run the other way. It would be easier to do that. But he made this church a promise, and I'm here tonight to remind you that he has not given up on us. We're giving up on him. It's us that's giving up because we're tired. And it's normal to be tired. It's normal to get that way because we are human. It's normal to get burnt out, to think, okay, God, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. That's normal. But you can't hang up the gloves and say, okay, I'm just done. I'm just going to stay right here where I am. And then maybe someday Shane will get up off the money. And when he does, I'm just going to take it. It doesn't work like that. There's obstacles in our way right now, but that's normal. He wants to see if we're going to press through, if we're going to fight, or if we're just going to throw in the towel and say, okay, this is it. We're done. This is where we end. This is how we go out. I'm here to tell you tonight. If you don't hear anything else that I've said tonight, I'm here to tell you tonight. It's not over. It's not done. This is the beginning of the promise that God has made to us and are you willing to fight to not let that promise go are you willing to fight through whatever battle is brought before you with complete and utter faith in God to accomplish your purpose because here's the thing this church could not work without you guys in it. we each have a purpose to fulfill a role to fulfill in this church and this church doesn't operate correctly if we're not fully doing what we're supposed to do in God. So tonight I'm asking you, you say, I'm not even in leadership. I, I don't even do anything. But you're a prayer warrior. Did God call you to work the altars? Did God call you to be a witness? Did God tell what he's called you to do something? Are you willing to press through and fight for it so that we could get back on top? Or are we going to give in and just say, it's, it's just easier just to stop. It's just easier. It looks like everyone else has given up, so so should I. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, I haven't given up. And I'm excited for what's coming next because I'm willing to fight for everything that God has for me. I'm encouraging you tonight to not give up because God's made a promise to you. And he wants to know how hard you're willing to fight. Hi everyone, I'm Corbin Chris Heineken, the Dean of Arkansas Sportscasters and host of Rest Excel. 
want to say a special thank you for resonating to Amplify Jesus with us here today. No matter where you are, if you're joining us live here at Resonate Church, whether you're joining us nationwide, courtesy of your local syndicated television stations across the country, or if you're joining us internationally and globally, courtesy of our YouTube simulcast. Thanks so much for resonating Jesus with us. Now, you're asking, and you're saying corporate, you know, resonate. Now, you guys always bless us. But we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Like you ask. We are. Multiple ways, four of them in particular, on which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one, join us live and in person here at Resonate Church at a brand new location. 3702 East Highland Drive. It is directly across the street from All Star Music in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Wednesday nights at 6.30, and we do keep in mind, things schedule subject to change. Option number two, online. That's a little timely thing right there. Use the term Resonate Church AR. That's right, everything right there on your screen. Resonate Church AR if you want to resonate your giving online. Just follow the directions, and you can do that safely and securely. Option three, your cell phone. Look, we all got one. Might as well use it, shall we? What resident you're giving using your cell phone? All you gotta do, text the word give to that number right there on your screen. Safe, fast, secure, easy, simple to do. Option four, mail it. If you wanna mail your contribution to us, courtesy of a check or money order, please make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. Once again, if you want to resonate your giving courtesy of a mailing option, send your check or money order. Make all checks and money orders payable to Resonate Church and send it to that address on your screen. And those are the ways you can resonate your giving. And remember, show love, your peace, and say Jesus. Hey, what up, man? What's up, buddy? How are you, bro? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Woo. Man, I just came out of rest tonight, man. You know it's all good, man. Woo. And so, let's talk about it. Hey, why don't you come join us? Sundays, 10 a.m. Come join us. Woo! Sunday night's scheduled to change. Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, 6.30. It's on. Our women's ministry is strong and rooted. <sighs> Our men's ministry has a solid rock foundation. All the kids can have so much fun. So can you! Our church is a great family church. And your family will love it too. Come join us at Resonate. So love. Give peace. Resonate, Resonate Jesus. Jesus. Kenna, thank you. Jesus went to, went to conquer death, hell, and the grave for you. He was willing to fight hard for you. There are husbands out there that need the sound of my voice. There are people out there that need the sound of my voice. They are fighting an everyday fight for their spouse. There are pastors and ministers underneath the sound of my voice that are fighting hard for the church. Some to keep their church doors open. Others, it's bottom line, the spiritual battles. Put it, no, rather put it like that. How hard are you willing to fight? Are you willing to fight that hard for Jesus? And we're not talking about fighting hard to protect your religion. Gosh. Throw that R word out of here. Not fighting hard to protect our tradition. Oh gosh, the T word. Get that out of here too. How hard are you willing to fight to protect the one that you love? Parents, how hard are you willing to fight for your kids? And I'm not talking about 
know there's a red hole this fight, this fight, this, this fight, that. I'm talking about how hard are you willing to fight them spiritually on your knees? In prayer. Are you willing to fight your kids? Hey, kids, let me ask you this. Are you willing to fight hard for your parents? Are you, are you in a bad environment right now? Well, by the way, you're the only spiritual person there. Are you willing to fight hard as you can fight for your parents? Are you? And I'm not talking for this fight. I'm not promoting violence. I'm talking about fighting them spiritually on your knees. Praying to God. How hard are you willing to fight? Hey, hey church congregation, let me talk to you. Are you willing to fight hard for your pastors? Are you willing to fight hard for your ministers? How hard are you willing to fight? All right, I'm going to be real for just a minute. And, I, and, and, and maybe, maybe any and everybody in my family is watching this broadcast. There are times spiritually I fought hard. Not only for my dad, for my mother, but also for my little brother. And most people don't want to believe that, but it's the real truth. There are times I fought hard for my family. And I didn't have to do it in front of a church to get it done. I fought hard for it behind the scenes. And that ain't posting me, that's posting God. They'll tell you, I'm willing to fight hard for my relationships. Not just for my friends, but for the people that I love. For my loved one, for my special individual that's so close to me. Guess what? I'm fighting hard for her. How hard are you willing to fight? Jesus fought hard for you. That lady with the issue of blood, right when she heard the Jesus coming in town, guess what? She was there to fight in a pandemic. Please hear me when I say this. She fought hard in a pandemic just to get to Jesus. She literally fought as much as she can spiritually. Because all I have to do is get there. Touch one piece. She knew the power. She knew the power. And how I run it. She knew the power and did everything that it takes to get to him. But we can't do that. Shame on us. And I'm going I'm to I'm I'm stick with this for just a moment. Hey, churches, how hard are you willing to fight for your past? Mm. Are you literally talking about, talking about him and talking about your church behind the scenes? And for some people that used to go to like their certain churches, but I moved on, but you're still talking about the, your previous past behind the scenes? Shame on you. How hard are you willing to fight for him? Hey, church members, are you what? How hard do you fight for your pastors? Don't fight hard for you every day, and even behind the scenes when you don't see it. Don't fight hard for you. How hard are you willing to fight for them? Are you willing to carry their load every week? Every week they carry a load, and I'll be real. For years, at this church, our pastors carried the load. And then there were times no one was willing to step up and carry the load for. Until one day, as, yeah, until, until, until the year 2020. When everybody was trying to figure out what they're going to do. I told my boys, I stepped to my boys. And then I, then I, then I, guess what? I stepped to my pastors. I told them, I said, hey, put it on me. I got you. While everybody else can blend in and go, go live on social media, we'll do one better. We'll go to the places where nobody goes. We'll reach the people that nobody wants to reach. We'll help save the souls that not even some churches even care for. We'll do it. 
will will execute our mission statement. And guess what, Pastor? You ain't gotta carry the load. Put it on me. I'll carry it. And guess what? With God in the scene, everything became so light. That's why you have this broadcast. Because you got some people here that are willing to fight for their pastor. That are willing to step to the forefront for the pastor. Church rooms, how hard, how hard are you willing to fight for, you, for your pastor? If your church doors are closing, how hard are you willing to step forward? Hey, churches, you have a responsibility. That's to keep your doors open. That's for sick folk. Sick folk need a hospital to go to. They don't need the biggest hospital with all this and everything. They need the spiritual hospital be in your church. How hard are you willing to fight for the souls out there to get them in? How hard are you willing to fight? God, thank you so much for raising your sound to us. Thank you all for watching. Hey, ain't no service like a live wrestling service. Because a lot of rest ain't service on stop. Join us right here, live in the person at Rest Church, and for right there, you're screen. Plus, four ways to rest ain't giving. Rest ain't church, Jonesboro.com has the other option. And all the pictures, news, scoops, views, info, so much more breaking news. Facebook.com forward slash Rest ain't church, Jonesboro. And you join us here on this YouTube simulcast. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, ding, ding, ding. That way you ain't missing nothing. And guess what? We got another go. Oh, yeah. You better get all your family around Thanksgiving night because we're on the air at our same time. 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on this station and 9 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube simulcast. Join us, William, for our entire crew of Chris Hopkins. We say to you, so love, give a peace, you know it, resonate Jesus. Good night, Canada. Good night, everyone. See you Thursday. So long. Neither day.